Hello, my name is Solon Luthan. I'm a clinical psychologist based here at my high clinic. We thought we'd do a couple of videos just to clarify common questions that people ask about psychology and the type of work that we do. So the first question I always get asked is, what is a clinical psychologist? Um, clinical psychologists are professionals that work with people, with um, children, um, adolescents, adults, um, who experience emotional, psychological or behavioural difficulties of any sort. And um, usually you have uh, to do an undergraduate psychology degree, quite often uh, a master's or a, a, a postgraduate uh, course, and then you uh, access a course that is a doctorate in clinical psychology course, and, and this is a three years postgraduate course that trains you to become a clinical psychologist to work across the life span. So I work with adults and older adults, adolescents, often from the age of 16 onwards. So and in a, with a range of difficulties, I might be um, helping people who have low mood and depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, panic disorder, health anxiety, um, postnatal depression, so bipolar disorder. I, I do work, as I explained earlier, clinical psychologists are trained to be able to support a, quite a range of difficulties. And, and sometimes they're not like diagnoses, um, and, but people have more stress related to work, relationships difficulties, uh, maybe falling into behavioural traps that they feel uh, are not particularly helpful and they would like to change and um, they, they might access therapy for that. Cognitive behaviour therapy is a type of therapeutic approach um, that relies very much on the idea that what we think influences the way we feel and the behaviours that we do. And everything is very much uh, related and, and interrelated with each other. So the way I feel will influence the things that I do and the things I think as well. And the things I do will influence equally the things I think and behave. And what we do in cognitive behaviour therapy is trying to identify those patterns of behaviour, those um, links between the thoughts, the emotions and the behaviour, the physical sensations as well. And, and see whether or not there are ways that we could change and uh, modify those um, circles. So if I just give you an example, if I'm alone in my house and I hear a noise and I think, oh my God, someone's trying to break into my house. How am I going to be feeling? Um, I might feel nervous, anxious, worried, uh, frustrated. And I might call the police, hide. Um, I call someone and um, protect myself. So the way I think is going to influence the way I feel and the things that I do. But if I'm in the same situation and I'm in my house and I hear a noise and I think that's the cat next door, I may just not feel anything or um, you know, just get on with what I'm doing. So it's not necessarily going to change what I do um, or the way I, I feel. So what we try and do is look at whether there are different ways of thinking about the same situation, whether that's the only way of thinking and, and whether there are more helpful way, ways of thinking. So ultimately what we try and do in cognitive behaviour therapy is take a step back and reflect on our thoughts and um, see how those influence our behaviours and our emotions. And also develop new skills, new tools, new strategies, coping behaviours. Um, to help us challenge, uh, navigate the challenges in, in life, which undoubtedly we all, we all face. So when, when someone refers themselves to therapy, calls into the clinic, makes an appointment, the first thing that um, I do, I'm always very happy to have a, an informant chat over the phone um, if, if, you, if someone is deciding whether or not this is the right approach or the right time for them. And, um, but if we do make an appointment, the first thing we do is an assessment and that's to get a sense of what the people's difficulties are, what that person's difficulties, what are their goals, what are they trying to achieve, what are they wanting to help with and is this the right approach, the right therapy, am I the right person, is this the right time for them to engage in therapy. 
assuming all of that um, we agree that uh, is, is the right time and, and um, type of therapeutic approach, then what we'll do is we agree on goals and agree a number of sessions to try and see whether this is um, helpful for them. So I always will be reviewing the um, therapy and how things are progressing towards people's goals because ultimately what we want is to try and help someone to change things that are um, creating discomfort, distress um, or emotional difficulties to them. And in therapy what we try and do as I explained earlier is very much around trying to identify those patterns of thoughts, emotions, physical sensations and behaviours and, and see whether we could change. Sometimes we can change a bit of behaviour and that helps in thinking um, uh, and changing the thinking as well and the emotions. Sometimes what we need to change is the, the thoughts and um, it's not so much maybe the content of the thoughts, sometimes are the processes and understanding how, um, what are the processes that are more associated with the stress, emotional difficulties and which are the processes that um, help us get away from that, um, uh, those emotional difficulties as well. So, um, we'll do skill training, we'll do practice in the sessions, we might um, come up with behaviour um, experiments that we, we can uh, set up together and we always will be hoping to come up with something towards the end of the session that, um, might, that could be taken forward in between sessions. So ultimately the work doesn't always happen in the session, it's actually what you do in between sessions that is almost more powerful. So there is that expectation that people will be working in between sessions so that, that the changes can um, take place in, in people's environments.